Hey students, welcome back. This week we're going to learn about random numbers. Random numbers, as you're going to learn uh, in our reading assignment this week, are really important, especially when we want to learn how to program games. Um, we are going to program a very simple game this week, um, but random numbers are important in lots of different types of games, even really complex ones. And so we need to learn how to generate random numbers using a computer. You can see I have a little program that's opened here, and it uh, simply says this program will create 50 pseudo-random numbers between 1 and 100. Press any key to continue. I press enter, and all of a sudden it churns out about 50, not about, exactly 50 numbers. We can see that I got 75, 1, 1, 13, 17, 37, 99 goes on down here and you'll see that sure enough I have 50 numbers and they're in no particular order they actually are considered random numbers between 1 and 100 okay now why did I say these were pseudo random numbers well if you read the article that I print in um, our online class you'll learn a little bit more about why computer-generated numbers aren't truly random, but for all intents and purposes, um, especially for how we will use it in our class, we can consider them random numbers. But if you want to be technically correct, they are pseudo-random. All right, so I ran this program once. Sure enough, it, it gave me 50 numbers, random numbers. Let's go ahead and try it again and just see if I get a different set of numbers. And I press and we can see here now, sure enough, I've got a totally different set of 50 numbers. And they uh, range between 1 and 100. I even got 100 a couple times here. Um, but I'll never get a number that's greater than 100, and I will not get a number that's less than 1 in this particular program because of the way I programmed it. So let's take a look at how we create these random numbers, or pseudo-random numbers. We see here, um, like many of the programs we've used before, I need to include my standard library. So here's my input output stream library. But now another library we've, we've never used before is included here. And this is actually the C time um, library, which is required. And this basically allows me to interact with uh, and use different functions that are part of the time library. And you'll find out in a minute why I need to interact with these functions that deal with time in a moment. That'll become clear to you. Okay, so I have to include the C time library, and then I also include the standard namespace STD, and then I open up my main function. So, so far, except for the C time uh, library, everything's the same. So we go on down to our main function, and one of the first things I need to do is what's called seed the random number. Again, as you read the article, uh, that I printed in, uh, in our online class, you'll understand more why we need to seed a random number. Um, but basically what you're doing is using the clock on the computer by calling a function that's part of the C time library, and that function's name is time. You're sending it a null number, uh, which means an empty or, or uh, a number like zero that has no value, uh, and you're sending it that null value into the time function and it's returning a number that's based on the current time and since the time on the computer changes every second or millisecond you're always going to get a different seed number from the srand or seed rand function okay so basically i'm just getting a number from the clock on the computer okay based on the current time uh, in this particular program i just create a integer variable called counter. I set its initial value to zero. And you'll see how I use that in a second. And then I give just a little welcome message here. I say the program will create 50 pseudo random numbers between 1 and 100. Okay, and then I pause, allowing the person to read that message and then press enter. And then as soon as I do that, I go into a while loop, which should look familiar. And this is where I'm using my counter variable. Remember I set counter to zero? And so it says, that I should loop while the counter is less than 50. Well, it's currently less than 50, so I go ahead into the loop, and now I finally see my rand, our random number generated, with the rand function. Random number is just a variable I create. I could call it anything. I just happen to call it random number, and it's an integer. A random number is going to be assigned 
a value based on this calculation. Okay, and the, the uh, calculation is, I use the RAND function, and then I use modulus 100 plus 1. So what am I doing there? Well, the variable or the function RAND always returns a number between 0 and 32,767. Why it returns a number between those uh, numbers, I don't know. I don't know why they chose 32,000. But that's just the way it is. And so what I can do, though, with that number is if I do mod a modulus 100 calculation on it, it basically will always return a number uh, between 0 and 99, right? So, so I, I'm constantly dividing this number, um, whatever number it returns, by 100, and I will get some remainder. That remainder will either be 0, 1, 2, all the way up to 99. As soon as I get uh, to 100, it'll go back to um, 0, remainder 0. And so I'll always get a number between 0 and 99. And then I can just add 1 to it, because remember, I wanted a number between 1 and 100, not 0 between 0 and 99. So I add 1. OK? And so now I'm getting a random number between 0, or excuse me, between 1 and 100. All right. So then I print out that random number, whatever that was. And then I increase the, the value of the variable called counter by 1 because that's how I'm keeping track of my loop. So I only go 50 times. Okay, It started at uh, 0, and it'll go up to actually 49, which is less than 50. And uh, it'll run 50 times, and then it'll leave the loop. OK, so let's just go ahead, now that we know how it works, let's go ahead and run it again. OK, and again, asks me to press any key. I do, and then I get 50 different numbers that are between 1 and 100, OK? And then the program ends. All right, I want you to go ahead and create this program, as you see here. Um, and again, I'll just kind of scroll through it slowly. You can pause the program uh, if you need to take a closer look at the um, program that I've written here. And I want you to go ahead and get it running so that you can generate numbers between 1 and 100. Okay, we see uh, the full statement here. Okay, I'll also put this code in Moodle so you can see it more clearly. All right, once you get that done, then go ahead and look at the exercise in uh, in Moodle in the in our assignment. And what I want to want you to do is change this line of code right here so that you get a range of numbers. Uh, that are no longer between 1 and 100, but a different range of numbers. For example, if we look here uh, in the exercise, I want you to figure out how to get a range, how to get random numbers between 10 and 20, or how to get uh, random numbers between 50 and 100, or between 1 and 100. Well, we've already done that. How about between 5 and 25, or how about between negative 10 and positive 10? Figure out how you can do that now. I give you a, um, a calculation here, okay? If you use rand function modulus, and then you simply put in the the high number and the low number that you want, you actually s subtract the low number from the high number, and then add one, and then um, take that, do modulus with that number, and then add the low number again. You will get um, the range that you want. Okay, so I want you to experiment with that and uh, generate random numbers between these ranges. The goal here is I want you to become very comfortable in using SRAND and RAND to generate random numbers uh, between a uh, various different range of numbers and just get really comfortable with how to do that because you're going to be using that in the rest of the assignments this week. All right, good luck.